Hello and welcome to this Swift tutorial. In this video, we are going to take a look at how you can start placing constraints programmatically. Oops. So constraints is a developer's favorite tool as it lets you make your app look awesome at launch time and on any device. And in this video, we are going to take that one notch up and we are going to start to do that stuff programmatically. And the way we do that, I'm going to show you in this video right here, right now. So let's start by creating a Xcode project, a new Xcode project. I'm going to make this a single view application and I'm going to call it prom uh, con programmatic constraints. And I'm going to save it on my desktop, put this in full screen and we're actually not going to concern, be concerned with the storyboard in this video we're just going to focus on our view controller because we're going to do everything programmatically from creating our UI elements to placing some constraints on them. So if we now head over to our view controller, I am going to start by creating a button. So I'm going to say let my button, which is equal to a UI button. See, there we go. And then I am going to jump down here and I'm going to customize the look of the button the second that the application launches. So I'm going to write it within the view did load uh, method. And here I am going to first of all say my button dot translate auto auto resizing mask into constraints is equal to false. And this is, uh, we, we do this in order to avoid uh, conflicting constraints because if you place conflicting constraints, you will get some problems, some errors. This makes sure that you remove that, those that could possibly, um, or you, you remove constraints that could provide a conflict. You just remove that and then you start from scratch. And now we're going to build up the constraints to fit our UI button. The way we do that is, um, or actually first, we're just going to customize the button a bit further. So we're going to say my button dot background color, just to show you that you, let's see, back ground color, and it is going to be a UI color. And here you can decide the color. I'm just going to make it orange for now. And I'm doing this just to show you that you can actually customize the element just like you would a completely normal button. So here we are setting the background color. Then we're going to say my button dot set title. And our title is going to be press, press me for UI control state normal, the default option. Then we're going to say my button dot uh, set title color. So I'm just going to make this white dot white let's see ui color ui color dot white and then ui control say dot normal and then lastly i'm going to add it to our view so self dot view dot add sub view and we're going to add my button so what we have done here is we have created a button programmatically then we have uh, removed constraints that could provide a hazard for us. And then we are setting the background color to orange. We're setting the title to press me. We're setting the title color to white and we are adding it to our view. Now, before I launch this, I would like to place some constraints, constraints for button. And we are going to need four constraints uh, initially. So I'm going to say let top constraint which is going to be the constraint that goes from the top of the button to the top of our view controller so how many uh, points uh, difference or gap do we want right there so we're saying top constraint and we set that equal to my button dot top anchor dot constraint and we set that equal to self dot view let's see self dot view dot top anchor. So we're setting that gap equal to the, um, the top anchor of our whole view. So our total view, and we are going to do the exact same thing 
with our bottom constraint and we just change out some uh, words here so bottom and also here bottom cons anchor and right here so now we have placed the constraints from the top of our view to the top of our button and from the bottom of our button to button to the bottom of our view controller <coughs> But now we need two more and that's on each side of our button. So we're going to create another constant here and I'm going to name this left constraint. And I'm going to set that equal to my button dot leading anchor, which is the left side dot constraint, which should <clears throat> be equal to self dot view dot leading constraint leading anchor I mean there we go and then you can just copy this one more time and I'm going to name this right constraint and now in order to access this one we just use the right uh, anchor see right anchor and also here right anchor so here we have created constraints for the top, for the bottom, for the left side, for the right side. And now we are going to push them into an array. Uh, so combine them in an array. And then we are going to add that array of constraints to our button. And then we will have a button filled with all of those constraints that we have created programmatically. So let's see if we are able to do this. And we simply say, um, Actually, I'm going to create the array up here so that we can access it from a function later on in this video. So I'm just going to say let button cons, which is going to be an array of um, ns layout constraint. And it's going to be empty for now. <clears throat> and then we're going to fill it down here. So button, uh, button cons is equal to and here we are just going to write our constraint so top constraint bottom constraint left constraint and our right constraint so here we have all of our constraints in our array button cons and now we're just going to activate these constraints and the way we do that is we say ns layout constraints dot activate and the constraints that we activate is button cons. So here we have taken all of our constraints, squeezed them into an array, and then added it or activated the constraints. So now let's see what the error is here. Yeah, we have to make this error up here, variable, a variable so that we can change it down there. And then I'm going to simulate this on my iPhone 7. And then if everything is working as we want it to, we should have a orange button stretching from all the sides of the view controller. So let's see if that is indeed the case. So here, as you can see, we have our button, but it doesn't do much yet, but at least the constraints are working beautifully. It's stretching from the top to the right to the bottom. And as you can see, the label is nice and centered or the button is nice and centered. So that's awesome. But now we are going to add a function to this button. So when we click this button, it's going to shrink. It's going to become a uh, square. And then uh, we'll add some constraints to that square so that it looks like a square. And then, uh, yeah, that's going to be it. So we're going to press this button and then it's going to become a square with new constraints. The way we do that is we first of all add an action to our programmatically created button. So we say my button dot add target let's see target and our target is going to be self and the function that it's going to call is going to be hashtag selector and the name is just going to be action we haven't created it yet but we are going to do that and then here we are going to here you can choose between many events as you can see all editing events all events all touch events but i'm just going to take the default one touch up inside so here now we have um, now we have uh, specified which function we want to call each time we click our button, and then we're going to create that function down here, name action as we specified up here, and then down in this action uh, function 
we are going to specify what we want our button to do. And the first thing that we want to do is we want to deactivate the constraints that we created a couple of minutes ago so that we can add new constraints. And the way we deactivate our constraints is we say NS layout, much of the same as how we activated it. Now we say deactivate and the constraints that we want to deactivate is button counts. So now we have deactivated our constraints. Our button now looks funny. Uh, we can just take a look at it. Uh, it's probably going to shrink and then stretch up into some kind of corner. So let's see what it does. I click my button and there it shrinks up in the left corner. So not exactly as we wanted to. So now we're going to need to add new constraints. So let's do that by continuing in our action function and we are going to define new constraints. So what we're going to need is we're going to define the height and the width of the button. So we're going to say button height is going to be equal to my button dot height anchor dot constraint. And it's going to be equal to a float. And that float can be whatever you want, but I'm just going to give it 200 in height. And I'm just going to copy this one. And we are going to change out height with width and also here, let's see, with anchor. And that's going to do, I'm going to have 200 height, 200 width, and then I'm going to align it uh, vertically in the container and horizontally in the container so that it's a square that sticks in the middle of our view. So let X placement, which is going to be equal to my button dot center x anchor dot constraint and it's going to be equal to our self dot view dot center x anchor and then we can just copy this line of code and we're going to paste it down here and then we're just going to change out the x with the y center y anchor and also here so now we have all of our constraints and now we need to do the same thing as we did above we need to stuff them into an array. So new button cons is going to be an array. And as you can see, we don't define this array up here because we're only going to use the array in this function. So there's no need to uh, define it up here so that we can access it elsewhere. So let new button constraints is equal to button height and button width and but no it's x placement and y placement and i'm just going to specify which type of array this is and it's an array of ns layout constraints just to make that absolutely clear and then i'm going to activate them ns layout constraint dot activate and the constraints that we want to activate is new button comps so now let's launch our application. And now we should have start with a button that stretched out. And then when we press it, it should become a square nice and centered in our view. Let's see if that's the case. So here's my button. I click it, bam, and it becomes a square. So this only happens once because uh, we don't switch between them, which you could. You can have a switch or if statement right here that switches between um, new button constraints and button cons but right now it's only a one time one uh, a one time uh performance you just click it once bam and it becomes a square so that's our app but the most important thing here the important aspect of this video was how to place constraints programmatically and after watching this video which you have done right now i believe you will have a firm grasp of how you can start placing uh basic uh, constraints programmatically in your code, how to deactivate constraints, how to activate constraints and all that good stuff. So thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure that you click the subscribe button so that you stay tuned for future videos. Other than that, thank you for watching.